Good evening to all of you. So we were discussing Patanjali Yoga Sutra. We were discussing till like Sutra number 40. So we started with saying Patanjali said, uh, what is yoga? So yoga is basically um, Chitta Vritti Nirodha moments in the mind has to come to a halt. Then you find the true self within. When you your mind is not in that state or when the mind is running all over the place, basically you take the form of a thought. You will get carried away with a thought, right? Then it, it can be anger, it can be anything, it can be love or anything. So you will get carried away with it, right? So then he said, um, so how to come there? So before that we understood, okay, what are these types of thoughts? Then it can be based on, remember again, I'm reminding the rope example. So it, it is exactly a rope, it can be a rope. Is it a rope or not? So something like that. So there is a smoke, and there is a fire, right? So something like that. So you perceive things outside the nature in different, different ways. How you perceive is through your five senses. So these are the collecting factors, which is feeding the information to your mind. Then the mind has a couple of engines, which is called as buddhi manam ahamkara, right? So buddhi is the discriminative factor. I identified something is called the uh, ahamkaram. So manam is the feeding factor. So based on that, you identify, okay, this is this. The way how I see it, this book is white, something like that, right? Then what happens is he said, okay, fine. So if that is the nature which our mind is going to take, that is not going to give you a freedom, right? And that is not the true self of you. So you need to basically contemplate on certain things and try to bring this whole movement to a halt. Whatever that practice is, when you are doing that practice, you have to do that practice in two different ways. <clears throat> what are these two different ways is, number one is vairagya, meaning whatever that you do, you should not get attached to anything, right? You should go beyond the attachment. You don't have the likeness, good, bad, pin, punya, apunya into that, right? So you need to, when you are doing something, you do it with the whole heart, do it, finish it, move on, right? Then second one is when you're practicing something you do with Vairagya, you have to make sure that you do it in a prolonged, dedicated way, which we call as Abhyasa. So anything what you do in that case, so basically you need to do uh, keeping these two things in your mind, right? Vairagya and Abhyasa. So these two are like two wings of a bird. Without the wings, you can't fly, right? Then, so when, uh, when we do this, then the next thing is, so you try to sit in meditation, right? So you try to do anything, then there are certain obstacles coming on your way, right? It can be physical diseases, physical, physical illness, or mental illness. Then Patanjali explained into further, it can be physical illness. For that, yes, we will give you yoga. It can be mental illness, right? Or it can be deep down things like depression. So what happens is when you go into meditation, right? Why you go to meditation now? Can't we do it without anything other than meditation? So the meditation is one way to go for it, right? So when we sit in meditation, what happens is, okay, we think, okay, think on a particular object, right? Take an external object and you contemplate on it. You look at the qualities of it and then you keep on contemplating it. Then what happens is mind again runs away, 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 right? Then, so one thought to another thought, to another thought, to another thought, it will just keep on generating thoughts and moving around, right? So that is one way of getting distracted. The other way of getting distracted is when you contemplate on something, a memory which is under the, in the mind, which was, you know, pressured down or which, which did not come out for a long time will start to come out, right? And then it will try to give you a mental agony without meditation. Though you close your eyes, 
you are thinking something so depressing so that's why we say closing your eyes is not enough right you have to do your work while you keep your eyes closed right then what happens is um <clears throat> so then you actually can contemplate on certain things once you improve that meditation of a particular object right you can actually bring it to a next level without an object you can meditate right so there are also certain certain things will come and give you obstacles right we talked about lot of these obstacles sometimes it is not only this vyadis or illnesses it can be laziness overeating not having a proper uh, routine for the day right not having a proper routine for the day will kill you right will make you a extremely a messy person if you don't know what to do on a particular day at least five different compulsory things that you have to do on a particular day if it is still not defined your day is day is messed up right so as a person when you walk wake up like how you brush your teeth you have to do certain things otherwise just uh, stay for a week without brushing your teeth your family will leave you right because of the uh, disgusting smell right so likewise there are certain things that you must do right so not then the other thing is when you are doing a practice sometimes you start doubting oh meditation is this the right way to do for it is yoga the right way to do for it and uh, will it give any results so you don't see results on a day or two because of that you doubt it then when you are keep on doing the practice sometimes you lose the focus right then you don't want to steadily do it right so likewise this mind can have n number of distractions right thoughts so uh, we need to tackle with all these things then patanjali explains now if you have these problems there is a way to bring happiness to your mind so bringing happiness to your mind will help you to bring down all these unwanted thoughts in your mind and then help you to contemplate on something right one think of a guru think of a object think of something and you focus on that think of a statue think think of a god you contemplate on that so we discussed last week your environment in your home right so in my yoga classes i of course tell this in the very first day itself so yeah so what we say is so <clears throat> your yoga place has to be a conducive environment for you to do yoga when you come and sit on your mat you should not see ugly things in front of you you should not see you should not have anything that you don't like behind you right giving you a thought that okay i'm sitting in front here what's happening behind me right so that thought should not have so your yoga place has to be like okay there is a mat there is a nice background right and then you have something in front which makes you feel good makes you feel calm right if there is a tv in front of you which is running some 24/7 news cartoon and all this kind of thing be very careful right that's not going to give you peace right it's continuously feeding you different 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 thoughts right so you have to be very careful on that then the next thing what we talked about is yeah so the next thing what we talked about is so how to bring happiness to your mind so we got talked about happiness so meditation contemplate on something get a nice memory from your memory bank take a nice memory out which makes you feel good which makes you feel happy go to a happy place right so likewise uh, we talked about these things then we actually now we are coming to the real business with the mind right so i'm going to explain this 41 to 51 very fast right all right okay power is off good so 41 to 51 i will do it very uh, fast today but then i'm going to take a couple of slides which will help you to understand everything what we have been discussing over the last 51 sutras right good so 
these talks. So when the movements of the mind goes away, the yogi realizes that the knower, the instrument of knowing and the known are one himself, the seer. Like a pure, transparent jewel, he reflects an unsullied purity, right? Nobody understands this, except that, right? So what it says is, when the movements, so what are the movements in the mind? What is movements? Movements are basically the thoughts coming in your mind, right? So now you are at a state, let's say, there are no thoughts. Just imagine, right? No thoughts. Then the knower meaning, so if there is a thought to come and if that thought to come and disturb me, there has to be a thought, there has to be a person who takes it. For an example, there is a picture here, right? So there is a picture and I have to have my senses, my eyes to see that and then my mind to process it and say, oh, okay, this is this. Or from my mind to pick from my memory bank, oh, uh, that is a picture. Uh, that is a picture of trees. That is a picture of a scene. Something like that, right? So... When the movement, so if I don't have this particular thought or anything, right? Now thought is not coming into my mind. So which means even though if there is a picture in front of me, doesn't matter. It will not generate a new thought to my mind. So I am that still, right? Even something standing in front of me doesn't disturb me. How you disturb? By giving a new thought. So there's no thought coming, no problem. Let anything go and come, no problem, right? So, when that happens, the knower and the instrument of knowing are actually one. There is a knower, there is an instrument of knowing, but this instrument is not capturing anything. And I, through the instrument, is not processing anything. So, as a whole unit, we are not doing anything, right? It's okay not to understand, right? In a couple of minutes, we will understand, right? Good. Then, so it's like, then it's like a, it's like a pure jewel, right? Jewel is not covered by anything, right? This cover part also, I will explain it to you, right? So we will go through these uh, couple of lines very fast. Then I'll come back, right? Then you will understand what we're trying to tell you. Then Patanjali says in the next suit, at this stage, there is something called Savitarka Sampatti, right? The word meaning and content are blended and become special knowledge. Savitarka. Now, Savitarka, right? Tatra Sabja Artha Jnana Vikalpaha. So in Savitarka Sampatti, right? So what is Savitarka meaning? There is Vitarka. There is questioning. There is opinion, imagination, right? So this part of all this questioning nature is there, Savitarka. Otherwise we call it Nirvitarka, right? Vitarka is, you know, Tarka, Tarka is logic. We say, um, or we argue with someone. How we argue normally? By questioning and answering, questioning and answering. How you question, you basically don't agree with that. So you question, how we answer, because you want to say that your perception is right. So you answer, right? So um, like that, so you have in Savitarka Samadhi, Samapatti. Um, so we go on, which camera am I on? Okay. So Savitarka Samapatti, so the meanings of words. And so even when somebody is in a particular Samadhi, right? Or Samapatti, we say, Okay, he is in a particular dhyana or he is in a particular samadhi, but still he has these uh, little, little things coming and disturbing him. What are these little, little things? Based on his perceptions, what he thinks. Maybe when he is meditating, you hear something in the nature, right? Then the mind will immediately go and ask, oh, what was that? Oh, that's a bird chirping. And then you come back. What sort of a bird is that? And you come back, right? So this is a basic stage where, you know, things still come and disturb you, right? So still mind is running everywhere. Thoughts are processing, but you are trying to bring them to a halt. 
So what happens is you try, try, try and bring them to a halt, but under the ashes, things are still there, right? So after some problem, let's say people go for counseling, right? So you say, I lost my job because of this COVID and all. I don't know what to do. So I went to this person and the person advised me and I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm fine. Right. So you come to a particular stage, right? Then you start meditating. Then after some time you realize, oh my God, my life has become so miserable because I used to go for drinks three times a week. I used to go for a club three times a week. I used to go for a swimming club. I used to get this membership, that membership, everything. But right now, I feel like I'm okay. But I'm not okay without those things. Right? Now, those are the things which is under the ashes. Right? You go to a counsellor and the counsellor makes your mind really well and say, hey, you don't need anything to live in this world. Just a, a mat-sized place is enough. Right? Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Person also agrees here. That makes so much of sense. He makes so much of sense. And we say, right, we go to a counsellor and we come home and say, yeah, he makes so much sense. Whatever he talks, it feels so real. He makes so much sense. He talks the truth. You tell all this kind of thing. But then you come to meditation and go deep inside your mind. You feel like I used to be a person like this. What happened to me? I have lost this. I have lost this. How much money I have lost in this life? How much I, things I would have bought if I didn't lose this money? All these things will come and start disturbing you. Next sutra, right? Then Patanjali says, Smriti Parishuddhau Swarupa Shunya Swarupa Shunya Iva Artha Matra Nirbhasha Nirvitarka. When it comes to Nirvitarka, now Vitarka is question and answer, question and answer, the logic is there, right? Nirvitarka meaning no questions, no answers, right? Remember, we talked about Samprajna, Samadhi, and all these things. So there also we said, there is a particular stage when you start contemplating or meditating, you have questions, questions, questions. Come. Why am I meditating? Right? Eyes closed. Do I look nice when, I'm, when my eyes are closed? Right? Should I do any makeup? Because I don't know, right? How I'm appearing, all these things. Then you come to a place where we don't have those disturbances. So when those disturbances are not there, Right. So then basically this whole memory bringing you thoughts, right? The outer environment noises or somebody talking, giving you thoughts to process and all these things will go away. So there you are at a stage where you are in meditation, you are actually in meditation, right? So this is a place where, okay, now you are the same person who had gone to a counselor after a big life problem. And the counselor has told you, okay, this is it, this is it, this is it. And then you come and contemplate on it. No memory or nothing will come back and keep disturbing you. How we go to that place? So these are very easy things to tell, right? When you go to this, it will be like this. When you go to that, it will be like this. It's very good. This is the second stage of summer. This is the third stage of summer. This is not like scholarship exam, O-level exam and A-level exam, right? Because you pass O level, you pass A level, it doesn't work like that, right? So this is like basically total acceptance. Total acceptance and you don't see a difference between good and bad. You don't see the difference between the gender. You don't see the difference between one food to another food, right? Doesn't matter. Whatever you see, you just see and get rid of it. Whatever you eat, you eat for the nourishment of the body to survive. Whatever you hear, you are very careful what you want to hear, what you don't want to hear. Right? Even if you hear what you want to hear, you get it, process it, move on. You smell something, you smell it, enjoy, move on. Right? What is this? This is Vairagya. Right? Don't get tagged with Raga. Right? Go beyond it. Right. So, and when you need to practice it for a long time, you can actually come here. Right. This doesn't mean, again, like when I explained the Vairagya, it doesn't mean that you're like, oh, everything is 
nothing, no point of being attached to anything. No. You enjoy something to the maximum, then you start to see the negative side of it, then you understand, realize, and move ahead. Right? Something like that. We will move on to the 44th Sutra. I'm intentionally going fast because I want to slow down and spend some quality time with zero letters slides, zero word slides. Okay? Good. 44. What is Patanjali saying? Eta yaiva savichara nirvichara sukshama vishaya vyakyata. Meaning, the contemplation of the subtle aspects is similarly explained as deliberate or non deliberate. Right? So, you contemplate on something can be savichara samadhi, nirvichara samadhi. If you didn't get it, that's okay. No problem. Right? We move on. Right. Then he says, Sukshma Vishayatvam Cha Alinga Parva Vasana. Meaning, the subtlest level of nature is consciousness. Right? When consciousness dissolves in nature, it loses, it loses marks and becomes pure. Now, answer these questions in your mind. So, we have a human eyes. Let's only focus on eyes. We have eyes. All of you have eyes, different eyesight levels, but all of you have eyes. At least everybody who is in this session have eyes, right? So, do you believe that or do you believe like whatever you see is true or exist? Yes or no? Yes? No. I'll tell you why. So whatever myself and you, we perceive two different things. I'll show you a pen. Immediately one would say a blue pen, atlas pen, plastic pen, typical pen, cheap pen. Uh, not so valuable pen. Pen you are holding upside down. That's wrong the way you are holding. Then one would think, hey, he's a right hand person. Oh, he's a lefty, right? So when, when you see something, what 10 people perceive are 10 different things, right? Even though you are standing in front of the same thing. So in that case, can we come to a conclusion that there is no right answer for what you see? Right? There is no... So there is no right perception or there is no right one answer or there is no right one statement for what you are seeing. Right? There is no right one statement. So then, can we also say... There is no right statement at all for what you see. Can be. Right? There is no right statement for anything what you see, what you smell, what you eat, what you taste, what you feel. One would say, if I touch your hand, oh, his hands are very smooth. One would say, his hands are very rough. One would say, he don't even know how to touch a person. Right? So one would only think of, about his skin color. One would think, oh, that's his right hand. One would say, oh, that hand is broken or crooked. His uh, fingers are not in correct line. Right? So there is no one right perception of our vision. So if there is no one right perception, if we eliminate everything what we see, then we don't perceive anything. We don't get anything. Then what happens is, actually, you are coming to the pure consciousness level. One thing I can assure that every one of you need to agree is, this hand is made out of the elements in the nature. This is not made out of anything else. This is made out of the elements in the nature. So one would ask, are you sure? How are you saying like that? So we will forget about elements as well. Then what is left? Nothing. 
So you come to a state where you don't perceive anything or no thoughts are running. You are not giving any value to anything. So this is where the pure consciousness state is there. Right? Again, a little hard to understand, but that's okay. We will move on. Okay? In 46 Sutra, he says, the eva sabijaha samadhi, the states of samadhi described in the previous sutra are dependent upon a support or seed. So they are termed as sabija, meaning everything that we have talked about this sabitarka samadhi and all this. So these are based on a particular object. right? So we say a seed still exists. There is a seed, there is a mula, there is a root for that. Then he says, Nirvichara uh, Vaisharadhyay Adhyatma Prasadaha. The proficiency in the Nirvichara Sampatti comes purity. Right? Purity, sattva or luminosity flows undisturbed, kin, uh, kindling the spiritual light of the self. Right? So, very heavy words. Right? So, the Nirvichara Samadhi Savitarka, there is a seed. Nirvitarka, there is no seed. So when there is no seed, meaning there are not roots of thoughts in your mind, meaning so there is no space for you to generate thoughts. If your mind is not generating thoughts, but if you are still living, then there is a particular state. This is a pure state of a person. In Hinduism, we call it Atman. Right? In Buddhism, we call it uh, Mula Rupa, something like that, right? The root, root person, right? So, or as we say, at the at this stage, we have the minimum vitarka, right? Questions and everything is at a minimum. We don't have this, right? Then Patanjali comes to the next sutra. He says, when consciousness dwells in wisdom, a truth-bearing state of direct spiritual perception dawns, right? The dawn of the Nirvichara Samadhi means you enter to the uh, wisdom or prajna. Now, it's like this. So, this is a container. Right? This is a container. So, this container, see, this is like your mind. Right? So, this container, I put a battery here. Then I put a key here. Then I put a pen. Then I put another something, a pratignam, right? Then I also put a small picture. So this is like your mind right now. So you have certain couple of things put to your mind, right? So what happens is if your mind is free from all these things, now what is left here? This is the emptiness. This emptiness of a person's mind, when you come to this emptiness of a person's mind, they say, Patanjali say, you actually get connected with the emptiness of the emptiness of everything. Now, if I look at this, I call it, okay, this is a battery. How did I say it's a battery? Because my memory went to my memory library and say, oh, if it looks like that, and if it has one, two, three, four, five characteristics, call it a battery. Right? So, I come to a state where I see something, my memory doesn't do that at all. My memory doesn't do that anymore. So, do I know this is a battery or not? No. Now the vitarka comes. Then I get the curiosity. I ask, what is it then? It looks square, plastic, something, something black, whatever. So black and all these things are my perceptions, right? So imagine those are also not there. Then if I don't have the capacity to even ask a question about this, then what happens? This doesn't have any value for me at all, right? So basically, I see something, I don't have any problem with it. So this is where you actually connect the, so even in this one, even in any object, you connect with the pure consciousness. Right? So with this pure consciousness is what they call as, you get the pragna or the wisdom. Right? This is the self-knowledge. 
right so the nirvichara samadhi not the savichara samadhi nirvichara samadhi where you don't where the questioning also stops for you to question even your mind doesn't have anything to question right now you should think of a child like one uh, three months old baby when you show the child something child look at it like like that right why because a child's mind is not programmed enough to even not enough information in the child's mind to ask a question about what he sees not the language inability right he don't know what is black he don't know what is plastic he don't know the shapes he don't know anything right so now one would think so not knowing those you call that person an idiot right that patanjali comes next so patanjali says hey look here whatever you gather from books whatever you gather from the testimonies whatever you gather from inference that is not the wisdom that is knowledge there is a difference between the wisdom and the book knowledge or knowledge and wisdom so today one would come and call this black color tomorrow someone would say no no you don't call this black color you call this white color so from tomorrow this is white right now which knowledge is correct previous knowledge or now knowledge you don't know because all those are made up so the book knowledge and everything it's all either hum- it's actually human made everything is human made but the wisdom goes beyond knowledge no matter how many qualifications that you have you will not gain wisdom out of a book right you, wisdom can be gained through internal internalization right so that's why everything that you see if i ask you to talk okay have your face to this side now start talking about everything what you see you have words to talk about everything what you see everything what you see if you have words to talk about it's because your mind is pre programmed you are getting them out from the memory and talking if you don't have those things right if you don't have that memory what happens is you don't have a problem you see this no problem right no vichara vitarka nirvitarka no vitarka you see something no vitarka you see only a pure state of it right so that is basically what they call as the wisdom rather than the knowledge 50th sutra a new life begins with this truth bearing light previous impressions are left behind and new ones are prevented so previous impressions what are previous in- impressions this is called the memory new impressions that you are going to perceive so if the memory is not giving you ideas and if new ideas if, if new things are also not giving you any perceptions where will you be mind will be at a place where in its pure state okay. then patanjali says when that new light of wisdom is also relinquished seedless samadhi dawns meaning so when that new light so you come to a particular place where your mind is not giving you thoughts and disturbances or anything memory is not feeding you information whatever you perceive from your senses in the future also not giving you anything to your mind so your mind is at the pure state if the mind is also not even at the pure state you call it the nirvija samadhi so this is the nirvana which in buddhism that they are talking about right so everywhere in the universe so you also become that right now you are not that why because you have a i in you me myself my uh, particular uh, my character so amal has a character in the society dushanti jantan maruni uh, bunam everybody has a character in the society what if you don't have that character for you to not have that any character you have to be like a zero person right so that is very important just give me a second right okay 
So now let's go to some interesting things, okay? So next slide. So this is everything, this is everything we discussed so far. So we have sense organs, right? What do we have? We have sense organs. We have sense organs. Through the sense organs, we collect information. Then we identify what are these. This is a light. This is a statue. This is a book. This is a pen. All these things you identify. Why? How? Because I see something and I see a pen with the eye factor. Then I have a perception. Oh, this is a green color pen. Right, and then it can. So then I will say, okay, this green is not nice. The tip of the pen is not good. It doesn't have a proper grip. So that is your world of thoughts. Based on that, you will throw away the pen. You will scold the person who gave you the pen. Right, that is actions. Based on that actions, you get some scars. Right, some scars are basically pin, pin punya, punya your the repercussions which will happen to you based on your past actions everything so these are basically your, your samskaras right so then what happens is the whole process repeats again so we are living in the sense we are continuously continuing this particular cycle right so mind become heavy day by day. If you see a child, we all were children at some point. I right? don't look at a child, just look at yourself. Imagine when you were two years old. Imagine when you're four years old, six years old, while you were doing your fifth grade exams, O levels, A levels, what happened to you? Mind became heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. Why? Because this first process keep on repeating. So, we gather information, we gather some skaras, then action also accumulates. Then what happens? There is a past, is there now? There is a present and there's a tomorrow. If I ask any of you, what are the, what is your plan for tomorrow? You have a plan. What's your plan for the next six months? You have a plan. What's your plan for the next 10 years? Each and every one of you have a plan for that as well. But you can die at any point of time. Then start the relationships with people. Right, with your mother, father, siblings, the shopkeeper, the garage person, the office, this, that, and the other, all the relationships start. Dependence start. Duties, responsibilities come in. With all of these, what happens is a character is being built. I am this person. I am so and so. I am this one. Without me, this company will not run. <laughs> we think so, right? So, like that. Then, but has your senses captured it all? from your birth to date, whatever the senses, eyes, nose, skin, ears, mouth, or the tongue, right? Everything, whatever have captured, uh, are they correctly captured? Or whatever they have captured, can you consider them as correct? This is right. The exact correct thing is captured. What is right and wrong even? Can you define? I see Jayanthan, like a bold head. Should so what is better? Bold head is good, or hair like Varuni is good, or what is good? Don't know, right? Then can there be anything not visible visible to you? So we think we see everything. Can there be things that is invisible to you? Can you see the wind? Right? Can you see the smell? Can you see a bodyless person around you? We don't know. What if all you see is incorrect? Then is what you see is the truth. How do you know these things? But without knowing answers to these four, we have built a character for us. Right? But we don't know. Now things are getting interesting, right? We are moving on. So whatever you perceive, either you perceive from your eye. It itself is telling you, you can't perceive everything from your eye. So we go for a microscope. Now we see everything through the microscope as well. 
then we say no that is also not enough right we need to see far away things so we need to see a telescope as well so we see things through telescope as well so we have the normal eye a little eye and the far away eye have we captured everything still yes have we seen everything no okay good so this is a human everybody are there cuttlefish lovers right people who are eating cuttlefish so same picture this is how we see is this a cuttlefish let's say yes right this is a cuttlefish if this is a cuttlefish for us okay it's green color it has many arms it has an eye which is popped out and it has a mouth kind of a thing with long which is again outside the body and some arms like this right but then how does a cuttlefish see a cuttlefish it's just like an infrared diagram so what is the correct one here cuttlefish vision is correct or the human vision is correct but we have our sense organs now the best thing is now we are looking at a picture saying this is the human vision this is the cuttlefish vision let me take my pet dog here then i ask him okay now look at it what do you see he see both of these in another shape so now who sees it correct is the cuttlefish see it correct is the human see it correct or is my dog see it correct right then how do you say what you see is the right thing and how do you put it to your memory and next time you see a cuttlefish you say oh that's not a green cuttlefish that's a brown color cuttlefish how can the cuttlefish come come to give a, a conclusion like that because he only see the uh, the heat signals next right so this is let's say my living room or oh, no this is not my living room this should be my kitchen right so this the first picture shows you how a human see it this is a human's vision then the next is a cat's vision okay this is how a cat would see it then this is how a goldfish would see it right and this is how a rat would see it and this is how a fly would see it and this is how a mosquito would see it sometimes we think no if the mosquito can't see this much how can they focus and come and attack you right so how so how this may be not the correct picture but you need to do some research so uh, a cat or a dog actually see black and white and the rat actually see a very near only everything else is blurred to the rat right and the snake if you see a snake doesn't even have ears but it can capture the vibrations can we capture the vibrations we can't capture the vibrations now one sense is gone right sixth sense is not there with us we can't capture the vibrations right so then again according to these animals which one is seeing the correct picture we would say hey, human see the correct picture look how focused it is how nice it is it's all you know very clear right how many things we may not be seeing here right but based on this we make all our judgments so based on the judgment the thoughts come so we feel the thoughts with in the memory and based on that whenever we see something new we take the memory and then we give a conclusion to what we see if it is something new we find it out and then put it to the memory is that right or wrong no one knows so we are as humans or as living beings whatever we gather from our sense organs these are all external things and there can be n number of challenges or issues in our senses for sure we can't see properly under the water we can't see in the dark but cat can see in the dark so in the dark who is correct cat's vision is correct or my vision is correct can i say it even dark 
cat may not know something called dark because he have night vision there's nothing called dark i can see everything the cat would say right then i i call something called dark for a cat there's nothing called dark in the cat's world darkness does not exist just taking an example right so based on senses based on the mind mind is tricking you to everything it sees mind is giving you perceptions and you fill up your head with the thoughts what patanjali says is take them all out take them all out so these are the bijas or the seeds take them all out then who are you you are at a pure state so your pure state if you are free from all the perceptions your pure state is equivalent to any other pure state this is the same thing what we call as purnamadam purnamidam this infinity is there this infinity is there if i take a little bit from this infinity the infinity is not affected something like that right then we will move on right so if you see so this is actually the homework this is where we start to learn patanjali's yoga sutra right everybody has seen uh, you can everybody can actually switch on the videos right so i can see your answers <clears throat> everyone has seen the sea or ocean at any point in your life <clears throat> yes so which part of the ocean is still is it the middle of the ocean or the beach the beach is actually wavy right we even for thoughts we call waves in the mind so in the ocean all the action is happening at the beach right so waves are there the skaters uh, or what do you call them these people with big boats i don't know right so the kayaking all these things actually happen in the beach when the tsunami comes and hits the tsunami also happened at the beach but it generates in the middle of the ocean but the people who are fishing in the middle of the ocean don't even know that there was a tsunami which just went underneath them went to the beach and broke all their whole village killed everybody washed the whole area and came back to the sea right so we are actually most of us are people who are like the beach so much of action is happening right so much of waves are happening so because of the waves so we go to you know uh, touch the waves and then uh, bath and we see tsunamis we see so many things right it's like the beach is like the news right it keep on feeding you problems problems problem one after the other after the other after the other every day every moment a different problem so if you don't want to see a particular problem in this perception you change the channel then you see the problem in the other perception so likewise so you have different different types of problems right if you want political you go to particular channel if you go to nature you go to discovery if you want about traveling you go to fox life right all these things if you want cartoons go to nickelodeon right so all these types of action is happening so things are happening like the beach it's very rough it's moving right you don't know what will happen next but everything beyond everything is the middle of the sea just like this whatever happens in the beach the middle of the ocean is still whatever happens it is still to a level even when you go you can even see the fish down there right no movements are happening so we are also like the beach right as far as we are stuck in the beach we don't understand that in our mind itself there is a place which doesn't move right see is one right so the beach is moving but that same beach belong to one sea they are the middle of that sea even though there are like so much of ferocious fish and everything underneath it's still no movement 
So you need to find in your mind also that particular middle path. I mean, not the middle path, the middle area like the sea. Then if you are there, actually then you start to look at the beach from the middle of the ocean. Then what happens is when some news is happening, when somebody comes and give, deliver you some bad news or something, something, right? You actually, you can very patiently keep looking at it. Okay, this person is coming and delivering this, fine. So, but if you're in the beach, what happens is when the person is delivering you the bad news, you also get into that, right? You become that thought. You become that thought and you start being a part of it. So just like the beach, you will also be very rough, hit the stones again, go back, come again, again, hit the stones, go back, come again. All these things will happen. But if you're like the middle of the ocean, you actually see from the middle of the ocean, you see the beach. Okay, so I'm here. My waves are going and hitting the beach. See, I drowned one person. That person died. See, I just delivered some polythene to the beach. And now people are coming and recording it. Oh, polythene in the beach. And that goes to the news. And then they scold the authorities. All these things are there. Right? So if you are the middle of the ocean, no issue, right? You are not letting these things disturb you. So when you are understanding Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, the very first thing what you should do is not chanting this sutra. Don't do that. Ridiculous, right? Don't do that, right? What you should do is first identify that you are in the beach. Right? Identify. So tomorrow morning when you wake up, identify, okay, even to the speed of what I walk, is there anything affecting me? Why am I walking in this speed? Is somebody screaming at the door? Right? Or have I, so if I feel angry, why am I getting angry? Bread is not there. Why bread is not there? There's a bread strike. Why the strike? No inputs. Right? Why dollar crisis? Oh, this party, that party, you know, starts folding. Right? So, all these things are happening in the beach. Politicians are on the beach. Vendors are on the beach. Fishermen are on the beach. Uh, the family person who is screaming at you is on the beach. Right? So, try to visualize yourself like in the middle of the ocean and looking at the beach. Looking at all the actions happening from a distance where things are still. Right? To a middle of the ocean, to a middle of the ocean, even if you push a titanic size ship to the ocean, right, that you are doing it in the uh, beach, the middle of the ocean is not affected, right? Even a big plane or something crash to the sea, still the middle of the ocean is not affected. Right? Whatever comes to the sea, it's only happening in the beach. Right? So try to first of all understand, am I getting irritated for every little thing? Am I getting upset for every little thing? Do I think too much about everything? Right? Then if you really understand this, everything what I get mad about, am I even seeing the correct thing? Am I even hearing the correct thing? Right? Then what happens is you start to go to the middle of the ocean. Then you start to actually start stilling your mind. So this is the first activity you should do. This for To do this, you don't have to stay in meditation and try to do it. Right? You can actually, day in, day out, every single moment you can do this. That is number one. So this is what we how we start to contemplate on Patanjali's Yoga Sutra. Otherwise, no point. Okay, I know Patanjali's Yoga Sutra 51, chapter 1 is completed. Everything is good. I have a qualification, right? Nobody is going to give you any qualification, right? Knowing Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, right? So, first thing is understand whether you are a beach, whether you are a middle of the ocean, right? When you go far and far and far away in the ocean, the ocean starts being very still and calm. Whatever happens in the beach, 
you are not affected there. Whatever, whatever happens in the beach, you are not affected. Right? Then, yeah. So when that happens, actually you can live like this. As simple as that. Right? So this child, this is not just a random picture that I picked. Right? So this child is playing with the water hose. Right? Would you do this? Right now, if I ask you, right now, go out, take the hose, and take a shower. Right? You would say, no electricity right now. You should not go out because the lights are not there. A serpent will be, a snake will be there. And the water is very expensive these days. Are you giving, I mean, too many problems? Electricity is expensive. Everything is expensive. We don't have money to waste for water like this. Right? Then I can't get wet right now because I have sinus issues. I, so you will, you will give a million excuses. So if there are eight people logged in here, eight million excuses will be there. Right? So, but if you take a child, the child will be a very happy person. Right? So there are actually a couple of uh, qualities. Right? So when a person is in its true self of the mind, the truth only manages you. The truth only determines how your life would be. What is truth? Truth is everything is made out of five elements. Nothing is permanent, right? What you see, you can't be, you can't say that's correct. So what you see can be wrong, right? So don't get, don't become a slave to all what you see and your thoughts and your everything, right? Then, then what happens is actually you start to even see good in people. When some, somebody is, you know, getting into a better place, you feel happy about it. Because as a human race, we are actually moving better. Not only that person. That person is a part of the whole universal soul. So one person getting better is like you getting better. So you feel good about it. Then so you keep on, you always, you will get an addiction to be in this middle of the ocean state. When things are there, when things are happening, it's okay. I'll close my eyes. Just be. Right? And this happiness, even I have seen, even certain gurus in India says, I am at my best self when I close my eyes and just do nothing. Right? That's where they are in the samadhi. Right? And then, so this person is live, alive, there's so much of liveliness. And then whatever he gets, he will be happy about it. Right? And he's internally more richer, not outside. Right? So looking at a monk, outset of it, what is the monk even wearing? Right? No hair, no eyebrows, no makeup, no lipstick, no cutex, not even wearing shoes. No, even a tie, just a rope. What is life? So a person who is rich inside, it doesn't matter how his outside looks like. Right? Inside is what is more important and very humble, right? Living in the moment. So he don't want to fight with the world. So if at all, if you have anything to fight, you are fighting because your perception and that other person's perception is different. So how can you fight with somebody if you yourself don't know what you see is right? What you hear is right. If you yourself don't know that, please be humble with the other person. He also may be seeing an incorrect vision. So two people who see two incorrect visions, why you are fighting over there's no reason for you to fight because you don't know the correct perception. Right? So that this type of a person is more justiceable, right? He would always do the right thing, right? And then he will always be very happy, content with his life. There's nothing for you to gain tomorrow. There's nothing you have lost tomorrow. 
as far as you are living and if you can just come to the middle of the ocean state where nothing affects me no problem if that is the case then why you worry about tomorrow or yesterday right so that is what you call as a wise person so this is the whole 51 sutras of patanjali trying to explain you to become right lot of technical jargon is there lot of you know theories are there everything is there why all these things patanjali had to write because we are living in such a society people are bombarded with all these things unless you talk in that language and explain hey look here that there, there's nothing right so you you take the same language and then list down everything and say there is nothing people are not going to understand it right so basically that is the first chapter so your homework is identify the shade of your beach identify what's happening in your beach right identify what are the things disturbing the beach problems which makes you temper right which makes you cool which makes you happy which makes you unhappy right so that is the characteristics of your beach then start to slowly get to the middle of the ocean where things are not shaking at all so it doesn't matter if this person come today go tomorrow be with you leave you scold you appreciate you bring something not bring say good things about you scold you doesn't matter right so that is the whole lesson one so we will close the session from here is there any other slides oh no right so we'll close the session from here then we will discuss if you have any right so slowly